guys, it's Melissa Murrow with Vintage Bee Design, and we have just finished our big floor move. Sue and I will give you a tour of the store on Friday, but um, on our typical Friday Night Live. But in the meantime, I was getting ready to paint this dining room table that just came in. It has been all base painted and it has been sealed, and now I want to do a dry brush on the top of it. And this is something that when we typically dry brush our tabletops and then distress them, they sell like that. So this hasn't been done to this table. It was just brought to the store. And I thought I'd show you real quick kind of how I do the technique. Um, I was gonna think about doing an edited video, but honestly, I just haven't had time to edit. So I thought this might be a better way to get a video out and for you to see um, how I do this. And again, these are huge sellers for furniture. So let me adjust the camera and I'm gonna get to painting. So if you're coming on and you're visiting, please go ahead and say hi, where you're from. I will um, check periodically as I'm painting. So this was painted with Dixie Belle's caviar and then the base was painted with Dixie Belle fluff. And then it was given um, either one or two top coats of um, gator hide and we put it in one of the stores that we can sign at and it did not sell and we're bringing it back to Vintage B since we've made room for a dining room table and now I'm going to go ahead and dry brush and I'm going to use Fusion Putty and Fusion Little Lamb for this. Fusion is my favorite paint when I am doing a dry brush and that is because it does not require a top coat after I am done. So I did see somebody make a comment, so I'm uh, trying to figure out how I can see the comments. Because sometimes it's crazy. There it is. So, hi Jamie, hi Janine, hi Elaine. Um, good to see everybody. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. And then the other thing to dry brush is you need paper towels and you need um, chip brushes. Chip brushes or old mangled brushes are the best thing. So these used to be samples for some of our wise owl that um, we don't have these colors anymore. So I have these chip brushes that I'm gonna reuse. Oh, that wasn't helpful. So I don't know, everybody talks about how great these bottles are, I hate them. Um, anyway, I just sort of spit up on my table a little bit. Let me kind of show you what just happened. So can you see the bottle just spit on my table? Um, I'm gonna just sort of wipe that down a little bit. In the end, if it shows a little, it won't when all is said and done. So I'm not gonna worry about the fact that it is now a mess because I can fix that. Now, I could get water and fix it if this was a really big problem, but it's not because I'm gonna dry brush right over it. So I just take my paper towels and then I like to fold them multiple times until it's nice and dense. And then I take my chip brush and I basically get a little bit of paint on there and then I wipe the majority of it off. And then with long fluid, light strokes, I'm just going to sort of dry brush it. This is actually a little bit of a heavy dry brush, I'll say. Um, if I were really dry brushing, I wouldn't have this much paint on here, but I'm purposefully leaving streaks. And I'm gonna do this around the side as well. So I'm not gonna do the whole tabletop live because you'd get bored with that. So I'm just gonna do this portion of it here and then I'll get off and finish the rest of the table by myself. Now I am live in the store and I am the only one working right now. So it is possible a customer will come in and I'll have to prematurely um, get offline. But Wednesdays are not usually super busy days. What's important here too, is that you try to keep your streaks relatively straight. So don't reach out too far or you're, you're you're gonna get a little wonky in your straight line. And you can see I'm leaning over it. This dries really quickly. And 
I do have two leaves in this table. And it's important that you paint the leaves at the same time that you paint the table. You don't want to paint those separately because when the leaves go together, you want to be sure it's painted just the same way. And of course, we know dining room tables sell really well this time of year as people are thinking about the holidays, Thanksgiving, decorating their homes, things like that. Now, last year we didn't find we sold as many dining tables. And of course, we calculated that to coronavirus and people not having family gatherings. We're hopeful this year that we'll see an uptick in those. So we're trying to get a bunch done at the warehouse so we can bring them in as they as bring in new ones as ones sell here. Now my general mode of operations is that I paint the darkest color on the bottom and then I go to a lighter color and then I go to the lightest color which is typically either a white or a cream for me. I'm just making sure I hit this edge. So this part of the table is pretty much done with the first color. Let me just double check. Any questions that might be out there? That's not it. Yeah, Elaine, I hate those bottles. I really hate these bottles. Okay. So I know I said I typically go from light to medium to dark. In this case, I went from dark to light, and now I've got my medium. Um, and I'm doing it this way to kind of, um, I have a lot of gray, and let me show you the fabric of my seats. This is my fabric for my seats. So I have a lot of gray in the fabric of my seats and I really want to show that off. So that's why I opted for the gray. Now I'm going to take my paper towels and I'm just going to fold them so I can still use the same paper towel but then I have a clean surface. And I'm going to basically repeat the same thing. But this time I'm kind of going to make sure that I'm going over the lighter areas where you see most of the black underneath. And if at any time I put on too much paint, like if this area, you can't really see it, that corner area, um, this a little bit right here, if I decide at the end that that's too much, what I can always do is come back and do a dry brush of the main color over the top of it, of the darkest color over the top, and that'll break up some of the, the brighter spots. And I, sometimes I do that anyway, just a really light one just to kind of bring that base color back. This is a particularly great technique 
when the piece that you're painting has had a lot of scratches and marring on it and then I go back in and I heavily distress it and um, those scratches actually become really character in the table. I have done other videos where I've shown you like our old paint tables that I've taken those and done the same technique and we actually sell them for quite a bit of money. Uh, even when they were the most horrible bubbly tables that you've ever seen, once they're done, they're absolutely fantastic. Um, another thing is if you're finding that the wood tops in your area are selling, like the planked wood tops or stained wood tops, is you can do this and then um, make your, your last coat like chocolate brown with fusion. And that will sell really well too. At least that's, that's my experience. I hardly ever keep a table in stock when I've done this technique on it. It usually sells right away. And when we're painting furniture, when we're flipping furniture, obviously our goal is to sell as quickly as possible. Because then you get to move it out and move something else in its place. I don't know if you saw on Instagram that blue piece. It was white and then it was and then I painted the top blue and then added some flowers to it. This is the exact same technique that I used on that piece. Um, the only thing is it was blue and white instead of um, black and gray and white. I first painted it all um, Liberty Blue with Fusion, excuse me, Midnight Blue with Fusion, and then I did Liberty Blue and casement uh, dry brushing over it. I don't wanna make sure to get my sides. So I'm going to take the camera down and I'll show you a close up of what it looks like. Um, hey, Rashonda, good to see you. Um, the blue piece sold today. So, yay. Uh, but this was the same technique I used on that. So I'm going to, can I turn this around? Will it let me turn the camera? Yes. Okay. So here is basically what it looks like done. So again, where this area is, if after I distress, I decide that that's too much, then I can go ahead and dry brush the caviar. So that's how it started. I'll make all that match into this. And this is basically how it ends. And then I, thank you. And then I will um, heavily distress and add several layers of top coat to this. Usually I add gator hide. Um, by Dixie Bell to my finished tables. So pretty easy, right? It's a very easy technique. Um, customers really like it. Again, this is the fabric that I'm matching. Let me bring this chair over so you can kind of see them together. So that's how it will go. And some of these marks will change once I distress. You won't really see them like that. I hope you guys have enjoyed that quick tutorial, I'm gonna get started and finish the rest of this table. I will post completed pictures of it all set up in the shop uh, when I get it finished later today. Thanks guys. Oh, how many coats of top coat? I usually do three coats of gator hide. Um, and I use the blue sponge, the which I get uh, slightly wet, wring out all the water, and then um, dip it in and, and just sort of brush it across the top. And uh, I'll film that stuff and maybe add it to Sunday's video of finishing up this table for part of Sunday's video 
and uh, you'll see how it comes out. But it's a super easy technique and it always sells really well. So thanks guys for joining me. I will see you guys Friday night. Bye.